Okay, this is a common cross multiplication question. Okay, so Jim brought some chocolates. So let's say chocolates. Let's say the chocolates Jim bought was two units. Okay, so you split half to Ken. Okay, so Ken bought some sweet also. So let's name the sweets as two parts. Okay, this from Ken. two parts of sweets, right? So each of them started off with the same number of sweets. Okay, so each of them start with one part of sweets and one unit of chocolate, so same number of chocolates as well. Okay. And it's given that Jim ate 12 sweets. Ken ate 18 chocolates. Okay, and the ratio becomes this. So let's look at the, the concept of this cross multiplication again. Okay, so 1 is to 7 is given by a fraction like 1 over 7. Okay, 1 over 7 is also, sim is also equivalent to 2 over 14. Okay, and so on. So there could be many equivalent fractions. Okay, so the idea of cross multiplying is to take the numerator to multiply to the denominator of the other fraction. So what you see is like this: one times fourteen. Okay, it will be the same as seven times two. Okay, so you can go on with different fractions also as long as they are equivalent. So for example, three over. 21. Okay, so crossing over means that 2 times 21 is actually equals to 14 times 3 as well. Okay, so we end up like this. So we need to understand how this, this 1 over 7 comes about. So 1 is the number of sweets that Jim has. So the number of sweets that Jim has is over here. It has become 1 part minus 12. Alright, so 1 part minus 12. Okay, so in other words, I can rewrite this in the same form as the fraction. So I will write 1 part minus 12. So this becomes the 1 out of 7. Alright. Okay. So this becomes the 1 out of 7. So the other side is the chocolates. So that gives us the 7 here. 7 portions here. So the number of chocolates has not changed at all. So it will still remain as 1 unit. Okay. The number of chocolates that Jim had okay, remains as 1 unit. Okay. So you can over one unit so over seven so if you follow the same way since they are equivalent you can go and multiply by cross multiplying okay one times one okay which is the same as you just do it this way one is to seven and you box this up okay or you circle it then you cross and multiply them okay so this cross multiplication will give us seven parts because 1 part times 7 so 7 parts minus 12 times 7 84 equals to 1 unit 1 times 1 okay we need this information okay so this tells us the relationship between 1 part and um, 7 parts uh, sorry 7 parts and 1 unit okay so looking at the other side okay the same concept 1 is to 4 just like 1 quarter okay so to cross multiply means that I will either write this way 1 part okay so the one accounts for the number of sweets, okay? So can sweets for that can has still remains as one part, okay? Well, the s the four portions comes from the chocolates that can had. So the number of chocolates that can had was in the end becomes one unit minus eighteen, okay? So similar concept, just cross multiply, cross over to the other side and multiply it, so. What I'll see here is the same. So circle this times four. Okay, it's one part times four also. Okay, so I have the four parts. All right. The other side, one unit minus eighteen times one. So no no change. So let's do the same. One unit minus eighteen. Okay. Now I'll use this relationship to input into the second equation I have. So one unit is actually seven parts minus eighty four. Okay. So I see a one unit here. I can change it into seven parts minus eighty four as well. Okay, because of this relation, I can put it inside. So now I have everything in terms of parts ready. So I can solve this one part. Okay, 
So 4 parts becomes 7 parts minus 84. Don't forget this minus 18. So I'll just include that in. Okay. So a total of 102 is subtracted over here. So you can write 4 parts 7. 4 parts equals to 7 parts minus 102. Okay. This easily gives us 3 parts. As 102, one part would be 34. Right, so how many sweets did Ken buy? So original question was Ken buying two parts of sweets. Okay, so this part is the answer. Two parts of sweets, which is times two, 68. Okay. Alright, so even if you have, even if you've done the other way to find the parts, okay, or to find the units, alright, you can still use any of this. Okay, either one will help you to find out the parts. Okay, so how much does one part represent? That will be the number of items. Okay, so that will be sweets in this case. Okay, or even if you find units, that will be the number of chocolates. All right, you can still do it the same way to find out the number of units already. All right, so just need to add back this 84 to find out seven parts. And you can still find back how many items does one part represent. Then following by answering the question, so the answer is 68 sweets.